guys, Mixed Duality here, and welcome back to another speed build. Today, we're doing something a little bit different, and we're building a modern house in Oasis Springs, but with a twist. So with this build, I wanted to make a house that was just a square, like literally just a square, not a rectangle, no bump outs, nothing just a square, and then see if I could make something that looked good, and you wouldn't think that by looking from the outside that it was some kind of weird novelty build. So that's what we're doing today. The idea for this challenge, or challenge, I guess, actually came from my childhood home build, where I was actually pleasantly surprised at how normal the final product looked. I mean, it still didn't look good because it ended up being a fat rectangle, but I was genuinely surprised at how effectively I could hide a bad house shape using landscaping. And I mean, it's kind of a given that the weird features of builds can be hidden by things like trees. I mean, obviously, but with this build, I wanted to see how far I could take that concept. Like, could I just not hide a bad build, but actually make something that looks genuinely good? Well, I guess we'll see. Personally, I think I did a pretty good job, but I'm biased and you'll have to let me know what you think by the end of the video. So my strategy for this build basically involved two things, landscape depth and doing fun things with platforms basically using vertical space and depth to create the illusion of bump outs and an interesting house shape that isn't really there. My basic rules for the challenge was that I was allowed to do anything I wanted with plants and rocks, and I was allowed to ha use half walls as fences. Like, they couldn't look like walls walls, but as long as they were roughly fence height, it was fine. So you'll see me doing a lot of that. I also put the whole house on a platform so I could make fancy custom stairs using platforms to create depth and intrigue that way, as well as platforms on the roof to basically give the roof an interesting shape and create the illusion that there are different boxes making up the house rather than just one big box. So for this build, I definitely wanted to go more of a modern direction because I feel like it's easier to hide just a plain old square <laughs> using a modern build where kind of like basically anything goes. I mean, I don't want to say that making a modern home is easy because it's definitely not. I am definitely like a suburban stan. Basically, my favorite thing to build in The Sims is kind of like a two-story standard suburban house you might see in kind of like a standard quote unquote American suburb. So this was very much out of my comfort zone. I think I've made exactly two modern builds before this. And I was actually really proud of the last one I made. It kind of actually gave me very similar to vibes to the one that I'm making in this build. Obviously that one had a lot more bump outs. It was a lot more visually interesting than the one I'm building here even though I think this one still ended up being good. But again, you'll have to let me know what you think. This build also gave me a chance to really play with the platform tool and Oh my god, this was only my second time using platforms in an extensive way, and it was definitely an adventure, because platforms in The Sims are still so, so, so glitchy. Like, basically, once you place a door, the platform on the inside is going to immediately rise up like five or six times above where you actually want it to be, and if you ever do anything remotely to change the floor height, then the columns will change, so I guess my life pro tip that I personally learned in this build, uh, don't bother putting columns on things until the very end of the build, or if you are, just don't worry about it if they stop and start in weird places. They just use them as visual tools kind of for an idea of where you want the build to eventually go. Actually, one strategy I used to make this build look more interesting was putting columns wherever windows were and wherever color changes were, because actually I noticed that in my childhood home build, the transition between the green shingle part and the white siding part actually kind of gave it the illusion of being a new bump out if you just looked at it straight from the front. So I figured if I used columns to accentuate that, it might extra look like it had depth, like it was a separate square. The other reason I built this build was because I wanted a chance to play with the new Dream Home Decorator pack that I just bought because, again, I'm not really much of a modern builder. In real life, I probably wouldn't want to have anything like the aesthetic that this build actually has, but the stuff in the Dream Home Decorator pack is objectively really pretty, and I wanted to play with it. Speaking of Dream Home Decorator, I also wanted to give my thoughts in this video because I have never had more conflicting feelings about a pack in my entire life. I've played with this pack probably more than I ever had with any other pack that has ever come out, except maybe forget to work. I'm not 100% sure, but I've basically been playing this pack nonstop for the last week and a half since I've gotten it. And I have had so much fun with it. Like this is some of the most fun I've ever had with a pack in a very, very long time. But at the same time, I genuinely feel that this at its core isn't a game pack, it's a stuff pack. And I really hate to say that 
because I'm kind of a Sims 4 apologist, okay? I love this game so much. I've played this game for like probably a good, I don't know, 1,000, 1,100 hours at this point. I love The Sims 4. And especially since they've added the sentiments feature, the lifestyles feature, and now the preferences feature, I really feel like my game has come alive in a way it hasn't even before. Generally, I have pretty positive feelings toward packs. I don't really typically think of these packs as being like, oh, these packs are so empty. But this one, I genuinely feel that even though I've played it a ton, and even though I love playing it, and I've had so much fun, I feel that even though it looks on the outside like it's adding a whole new career, the reason I like it is because I like to build, not because the pack is actually adding anything substantially new. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. So I guess first, before I rake this pack through the mud, first I wanted to start with some of the good stuff. Objectively speaking, I think the new pack gives us a huge selection of buy objects. All of the swatches match really well, which I mean, I feel like I guess I shouldn't praise the pack for. I think that in general, this is a huge weakness of The Sims 4 that The Sims team should have corrected by now. I do think they're doing a bit better of a job, but in this pack, they really do a good job. So I'll give them credit where credit is due. I really like the feature where you do a before and after slideshow. I think that's really fun. Although I have thoughts about that too, but we'll get to those. I think that The Sims covering up their eyes as they go to a reveal, it's so cute. And surprisingly, I really like the modular furniture and the sectional sofas. I didn't really think that I would. I mean, I'm glad we have it now because I know it's something the community really wants, but it's not something I've ever really been fussed about. But it's actually surprisingly nice. I really like the modular furniture, especially the kind of more pillowy sorts of sofas. So those are the things that I think are objectively really, really good about this pack. But I think there are certain things about the pack that are also really, really bad. And I'm not even just talking about the glitches, but let's talk about the glitches. First of all, since the pack came out, and I don't know if this is the fault of the pack, but I can't consistently look at a Sims profile anymore. I noticed that it has kind of come back a little bit, but it's been very spotty. And I just really, really miss it. That's part of what has made the gameplay feel so alive for me recently. And it's just gone. And I think that that's something the Sims team really needs to work on patching because that's such an important feature of the game. And I'm, ugh, I'm just so sad that it's not there consistently anymore. But going back to the pack specifically, let's just go through the features of the new career, which is where the new quote unquote gameplay comes from. So the first thing that you do when you get a gig is you go to the clan slot and you ask them what they are looking for in their renovation. One thing I've noticed, I can't always ask a sim about their likes and dislikes. I can ask them all of the interior decorator questions. What are your design visions? Let me see your mood board all of that. And that gives me the answers that I'm looking for in terms of what they're looking for in a renovation. But I can't ask them when I'm on the job about their hobbies, about their favorite colors, about their design style preferences. And so beyond the design specifications that the clients give me, I don't know whether what I'm building actually fits what they individually like. In my mind, that's a seriously huge flaw of the game. It should be my job as a good interior designer to know my clients overall preferences and build something that integrates what they're asking for with what they actually like. And what I found is, even if I can, on the occasions where I can, it doesn't actually seem to matter. It only seems to matter what they specifically ask for, not what they like. So I guess that's a good thing because, you know, if I can't ask them, at least I know I can still do all the renovation, but that's a bad thing. I should be able to ask Sims what they like and then use that information in conjunction with what they actually ask for to create a build that is really good and specific for them. And I can't consistently do that. Moving on to the next feature of the game, taking before and after photos. I'm not entirely sure what the after photos do in terms of the gameplay. I think they actually do inform where the Sims go to look at their renovations, but the before photos literally do not matter. I could take a photo of anything and the Sims will not care. I know this because I have forgotten to take before photos before, or I've taken photos of the wrong floor when I'm restricted to certain floors for building, and it didn't matter. I still had a successful renovation, the Sims weren't confused or anything, and that was it. And that's a huge problem. If this is one of the main new features of the game, it should matter that I don't complete it, but it doesn't. And then let's talk about telling clients to check out my renovations, which is one of the main new things you do during a reveal. When I do this, clients often don't follow me around and even when they do, they usually just follow me up 
to whatever it is I'm pointing at, and then they immediately leave. They don't look like they're actually looking at anything. And in general, they aren't, don't seem to be checking out the objects on their own. They're just socializing as normal or using objects. For an interior design pack, my clients should be looking at what I'm doing for them, but they don't. At least they don't consistently in a satisfying way. And now let's go on to talk about talking to clients, which is the next thing you're supposed to do for this gig. You can talk to your clients about anything. You could yell at them. You could flirt with them. It doesn't matter. You don't have to talk about the renovation. You just have to talk to them about whatever you usually talk to about Sims. And that doesn't make sense. If I'm on the job, I should talk to them about the job that I did. I should be required to, but I'm not. The only thing where I get a consistent career reaction from my Sims is when I ask them for their final verdict. But wait, let's Let's talk about the final verdict. When you do a renovation, the Sims can react positively, negatively, or neutrally, where basically they'll say, oh, this renovation isn't really what I asked for, but I like it, or you checked all the boxes, but I'm not really feeling it, which is fine. I like that. The problem is I don't get any flavor text like that for negative reviews or positive reviews. Why is there only new flavor text for mid-tier reviews? That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, there's flavor text for everything else, well, for most things in this game. Why not for this too? It just comes off as really, really lackluster and lazy programming on the part of the devs. And I hope that's something they add to the game eventually, but I kind of suspect they won't because generally it seems that EA doesn't make substantial updates to packs. They might update the base game, but except for bugs, Packs generally don't get any additional features. I mean, if I'm wrong, correct me about that in the comments, but that's been my experience, which is unfortunate. That means I'm never going to be getting an update to the game that I consider really part of the experience. And that's just so disappointing to me. And I wanna go back and talk about a few more things about the renovation itself. So when you're in build mode, the biggest thing, and this is a bug, I know, it might have been somewhat patched for some people at this point. It hasn't been patched for me as of the recording of this video. You can go into build mode, take all of the client's objects, put them in your household inventory, and then when you go home, you'll have all of the client's objects in your household inventory, which you can then sell to make thousands and thousands of dollars, which is ridiculous. No other building on lots that aren't yours is like that. That doesn't happen if you try to quote unquote, move objects to a household inventory on a public lot under enable free build. It's just so bizarre. It's such an oversight and it's just so disappointing because literally this system has already been implemented elsewhere. This is such a big oversight. Why didn't the devs test this? Why didn't the devs find this out? before releasing the pack. It literally does not make sense to me. And it's so, so frustrating. Like when I found this out from watching Sims YouTube, I was genuinely angry because it really emphasized to me how little thought certain aspects of the pack were given before release. And it worries me because the Sims team can sometimes take forever to patch things. So I'm probably gonna be seeing this issue for a long time and that's just game breaking. Speaking of additional build features that are weird. So there are lots of nominally different types of renovations you can do. The first one you start with is a general room renovation, but then it branches out to renovations of public lots, specific room renovations, level renovations, level additions, etc., etc. Oh, and I also just wanna interrupt this really quick by saying I love this little vanity I built. It's so cute. I love how I made it built into the wall. But anyway, the Sims team did not add any particular coding to restrict you on certain types of renovations. So even if I'm given, say, a bathroom renovation, I don't have to renovate the bathroom. I can renovate whatever I want. If I'm asked to do a general renovation, I could renovate a whole floor if I want, not just a room. It doesn't matter. If I'm in an actual interior design career, it should matter what I renovate. And it's frustrating to me because there's two obvious ways the Sims team could have coded this using systems that are already existing in the game. For example, when you're building certain types of public lots, you have to meet certain requirements of what objects you put in there. All public lots, I think, require that you build a certain number of toilets or parks, for example, require that you build chess tables. So why didn't the Sims team incorporate something like that? So if I'm doing a bathroom renovation, why shouldn't I be required to build a toilet? It literally does not make sense. This system already exists. Or in a more complicated fashion, there could be a way to classify certain rooms that the game recognizes as rooms, as specific types of rooms. And that would have been a very good feature to add to The Sims in general, where you could basically just click on a room that's designated in the game and then code it 
as a kitchen or a bathroom or a bedroom or a living room or just general. That would involve a more complex update, but it could have been done, but it didn't. Again, there's two very obvious ways they could have fixed this and they didn't. So basically it's up to me as the gamer to impose these restrictions on myself when this is supposed to be a game pack that adds new systems to the game. And related to that, there's no limit to what objects you can delete from around the house to cover the cost of your renovations. Let's say I ran out of money to update the bedroom I'm trying to renovate. I could just go downstairs and steal a big TV and use that money to update my bedroom. And there's no repercussions for that. So not only do I lack a restriction on where I'm allowed to build, I'm also not restricted on what I can do to get money for a build. So basically what I'm saying is just there's not enough restrictions on what I can do in this pack to really convince me that this pack adds new gameplay. Going back to the reveal for a second, you get paid whether you finish all of your after reveal tasks or not, should you choose to stay on the lot and do the reveal. It doesn't matter if you don't finish, you get paid either way. I should get my pay docked if I don't finish all of my tasks. So again, a lack of restrictions. There are also little bugs where rooms actually do come into play, but they don't make sense. It kind of seems like more a glitch rather than a restriction. So for example, the other day I was doing a level renovation for the party house household. For some reason, I couldn't edit certain walls unless I shift clicked to renovate all of the walls in this room. I couldn't just paint certain walls, but then I could if I like clicked the entire room. But this also isn't consistent across households. I had the same thing happen to me again during another level renovation, I think for the Akiyamas, but then I couldn't do that. So basically, in addition to all of the lack of restrictions imposed on me by the game, there's also these bugs, these super weird bugs that don't give me consistent restrictions that actually do exist. It doesn't make the game unplayable, but it makes the game not very realistic and frustrating at times. Speaking of things that are frustrating, this dislike system needs to be tuned because they're either completely pointless or they're really annoying. They're pointless when I get some feedback from a client that they say don't like pipe organs in a kitchen because it's just like, okay, I don't put pipe organs in my builds anyway. <laughs> or they're annoying because you might have a client who says, okay, I don't like modern decor. There's no easy way other than by continuously selecting all of the decor styles whenever you open a new menu, except for the one you're looking for, to check whether or not any given object fits that decor style that your sim client dislikes. And now we're gonna get into little things like for example, the new stovetop and counter objects that you can place independently or together. Your sims can shop ingredients and mix ingredients on the stove, which doesn't make sense. But even worse, you actually can't clean the counter underneath the independent stove that you place without moving the stove first. You have to go into build mode in order to clean a counter that you dirtied from chopping on it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> this is something that I really need them to patch because you shouldn't have to go into build mode to fix a gameplay feature. That's just not acceptable. Speaking of objects, the new pack does not class objects very well. For a pack that's all about having storage solutions, only like four objects show up if you search for storage. None of the cl functional closet pie pieces show up under closets. The best way to search for dream home decorator objects is not to go for the specific type of object that you're looking for, but rather to sort all objects by dream home decorator only. And then all of the objects look so similar. These objects are designed to be cross compatible with each other. It's great, but they also all look so similar that I have to do a ton of reading when I search for each object just to find out what it is that I'm placing. Kind of wrapping up on my rants about the build by objects themselves. I didn't really care for the wallpaper. I mean, it's fine, but it kind of reminds me of stuff we already have in Moschino stuff. And there's only one of it. And I think it would have been nice to have two or more styles of build by assets instead of having it all be modern, I kind of would like to see something like Get to Work where there's two very distinct styles because again, I'm somebody who doesn't really do a ton of modern builds. Like modern builds, they're great, but they're not really my thing. I would have liked to see maybe a modern style of build by objects and then also maybe a more suburban style of build by objects or some culture specific like you might see in Snowy Escape for example, where everything is very Japanese themed. I don't know, I just kind of wish there were more different types of objects to this pack. And I realized that if they'd done that, they probably would have sacrificed on making a more well-rounded modern build by pack. But I kind of feel like since they skimped out so much on gameplay features, they should maybe do something like that at least to make up for that. Oh, and one more gameplay related critique. The tuning for the different types of renovations isn't good. The budgets tend to be pretty much the same across the different resident renovation types and also different lot sizes. So I'll have $7,000 to renovate a bathroom, but also $7,000 to renovate the Delgado household, which 
is actually something that happened. But because I had so little money, even after deleting all of their expensive objects, I didn't have enough money to furnish their entire floor in a way that it looked good. I mean, I think it looked better after I did it, but it was still so empty. I really think they should have done more to tune the costs of the renovations. So that way, larger lots A have a higher budget in general, and B, different types of renovations have different budgets. I hope they tune this, but because this isn't a game-breaking bug, I don't think EA is going to do it. I also think it would have been nice if, in addition to having this career, there was also some kind of interior decorating skill. I'm not even really sure what that would look like, but it would have been nice to include. So overall, my thoughts on this pack. <sighs> Again, I have enjoyed this pack so much. I've played it so much. I've had so much fun. But ultimately, it reminds me, in terms of the actual gameplay value that it adds, of some of the earlier game packs, like Outdoor Retreat and Spa Day, where they don't add a ton of active gameplay. It adds a ton of objects. It technically adds a new career. But the career is basically already a feature we've had since the very beginning. Build mode. So fundamentally, what we are getting here is a stuff pack. We're getting a bunch of good stuff. This is actually probably the most stuff we've gotten for a game pack, at least in a very long time, except for maybe Journey to Batu, which is basically useless unless you're building on Batu, which you can't do because there are no lots in Batu, but whatever. <laughs> But that's basically it. And it's fun. And if this were a stuff pack, it'd be phenomenal. Probably the best stuff pack we've ever had. But it's not. It's a game pack that we pay $20 for rather than $10. I'm pre being pretty critical. You have to keep in mind that I'm actually somebody who's kind of more of like a patient gamer. I almost never buy packs. Actually, no, except for this one and actually Journey to Batu. I've never bought a pack on sale because in general, and I've actually done the math on this, subjectively, they aren't worth the money to me. And in general, The Sims is just a really expensive game. So it frustrates me that this pack, despite being really fun, doesn't actually add enough gameplay to really be considered a game. It's a bunch of stuff. It's not new gameplay. So fundamentally, while I really enjoyed playing it, I can't say that I love it because I'm not loving a game pack. Also just in general, I mean, I don't think this pack is going to be for everybody. Like if you don't like building, this isn't going to be a pack for you. I don't really think that's a huge issue since I don't think every pack is supposed to be for everybody, especially not these smaller, more specialized packs. But it does also, I mean, ultimately have limited utility. So yeah, those are my very extended thoughts about the Sims 4 Dream Home Decorator. Anyway, after all that, let's get back to the build. So right now at this point, I believe the interior is pretty much all finished. And right now I'm doing the landscaping part of the build. And you see I've already kind of fiddled with the roof. I'm not sure if the roof is done at this point. It might be edited further. But as you can kind of see, I've kind of created the illusion of this house being made up of separate boxes, even though, again, it's still just a square. But yeah, you'll see a lot of fiddling with landscaping. And I'll probably cut out a lot of it because... I don't know. I probably struggle with it in real time for probably like another hour or two. Like guys, I'm a very slow builder. I enjoy building, but oh my God, does it take me forever. While we're searching for flowers, you might also no notice that I put sort of a quote unquote glass roof at the top of the build. That's actually a dance floor you get with get together. You can also do tricky things with roofs to do kind of a glass roof, but with platforms also that ends up being kind of more tricky. So I thought it was a little bit easier to use the glass roof, especially because the roof is flat anyway. So you also see at this point that I've settled on kind of like a purple curved flower sort of thing. And those purple flowers are actually from Island Living. It's kind of unfortunate because what I really wanted to go for. So if you go to the lot that's across the street from the land grab's house, you'll see a bunch of low lying kind of purple flowers that sort of look like the Island Living ones, except pff, honestly, not as pretty. But I really wanted to use those because they fit in with the actual world, but I couldn't find them. I scoured the debug menu. I scoured the regular catalog and I just couldn't find it. And it's so annoying because I found it the other day and now I don't know where it is. So if you guys know where those flowers are so I can remember where to find them, let me know. Also, so you see me right, in, right now putting in additional rocks. I'd originally not planned to do that, but I just thought it looked good with the modern aesthetic because I think that sprawling landscaping isn't really what I was going for, but I did like the additional color that it provided. And this is a good way to blend those two styles together. Also, so the pool that's behind the purple flowers is actually a pool. I don't think it's actually accessible to your Sims, but I've actually never built a pond in the Sims 4 before and I don't really know how to do it. So I feel like it kind of looks like a fancy pond. And I mean, if the, it's a pool that the Sims can actually use. I mean, go for it. Additional functionality is always good, right? And oh my god, guys. So yesterday I recorded like probably a good like three hours of a let's play that I am doing that I'm not going to tell you what it is until it actually drops because I'm really excited for it. And the day before I'd also recorded and today I'm recording and this whole video originally is like an hour long. So my voice is killing me. I feel like I'm dying, but I just really wanted to do this. But anyway, if I sound kind of tired or if my voice kind of sounds tired, 
that's why. And you'll see me struggling really hard what to do with that last little gap in the landscaping. For a while, I toyed with the idea of using that llama, and I've never actually used that object before, but I thought it was just kind of a bit too much, so I didn't. <laughs> now you see me working on the back patio finally. The one thing I don't like about the patio in the back is it ends up being kind of small, but the lot is only like 40 tiles long, so there wasn't really anything I could do about it. Plus, I still wanted green space in the back. It was just kind of a sacrifice I had to make. I struggled, as you can see, for a long time with the landscaping. This is why, okay, confession, I hate landscaping because I am so anal about how it looks. Like every little fern has to be placed in the exact right spot or I hate it. There is no middle ground for me. It has to be perfect. But because of that, it takes hours and hours just to end up putting, I don't know, three trees in the backyard. One of my weaknesses as a builder. But anyway, so the patio is kind of small, but I still wanted to put something on it. I ended up putting a game table there and I didn't like how cramped it was and how your son would have to walk into the game table just to get down. So I actually ended up switching the wall to the last platform to the side closest to the game table. So that way you walk onto the patio. And I think actually that was a really good solution. I think it looks a lot better. Also just in general, I kind of wish there were more functional objects in this build in hindsight but I mean I don't know form over function I guess it's what on the outside that counts kids am I right and you'll see I did end up putting some little half walls next to the windows on the sides of the house I'm not sure if this is really cheaty but it doesn't really look like a full bump out even though it kind of gives off the effect of one I don't know if that's cheating or not but it's what I did so Oh well. Plus I kind of liked the little garden. I thought the side of the house was looking a bit flat. And again, I don't think that having sprawling landscaping, which is what I tend to do, is really the style here. So it's just another way to kind of give the build a little bit more intrigue. I think the thing with modern landscaping, and maybe it's because I don't know how to do modern landscaping, is it's kind of like less is more. You want fewer patterns, you want crisper, clean lines. Oh, and I really wanted to put one of those bulbous bushes in there. I never actually used them before, but I thought this would be a really good opportunity to, but... <laughs> I just couldn't make it work. They were too puffy. And I did consider, as you see, putting some other plants that kind of mimic the landscaping out on the sides of the build. Ideally, I would have made the build a little bit wider, but personally, I think smaller builds look better. And basically, I'm trying to hide a bad shape as much as possible. A smaller square is less square to hide, right? And I'm just putting little finishing touches on the build, adding last minute decor, last minute plants, that sort of thing. I really, really tried to make that hanging plant work, but it just wasn't the vibe, so I had to get rid of it. I love those plants from Eco Lifestyle. I kind of wish there was a little bit more green to them, but I just love the aesthetic. I love the little bottles. Oh, they're just so cute. I love them. I put them in a lot of my builds, actually, even not my modern ones. Oh, I just love them so much. They're so cute. I really struggled with where to put the trash can because this build is basically just so small. And in real life, would you really want to lie next to the trash can? Because that's where it's put right now. Would you really want to play a game next to a smelly trash can? No, I don't think so. I did try to maybe put in a gate or a gap in the fence. Uh, sorry, not the wall, the fence, the wall. But it just didn't look good. And you'll see me trying so, so, so hard. I wish there were doors to half walls, but I mean, there's barely even doors to fences. Because again, EA can't be bothered to complete any of their packs. Anyway, again, not to be too salty. I love The Sims. I appreciate what the devs do do. I know it's not their fault, but I swear. So I just ended up closing off that wall and putting the trash can right outside the door. And I ended up using this trash can. The other one I just deleted is my favorite, but I thought this one looked a little bit more stylized and kind of fit with the vibes more. And that is the whole build, guys. So I wanted to go ahead and pop in for a quick tour, especially of the inside, just because I was mostly just ranting about Dream Home Decorator while I was doing this build. Anyway, so you come inside right here and this is is our generally pretty open floor plan. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out given how the, sm the space was. I put in one of the new black sectional sofas. These are actually not my favorite ones. I really prefer the kinds with the more pillowy tops, but these are nice too. I thought that it fit the more clean, modern vibes I was going for. I made this purposefully asymmetrical console for the TV, and I kind of like that. I think it kind of suited the overall asymmetrical appearance of the build, even though, again, this is just a square. And we'll look at the outside again once we pop back out. These are the new Dream Home Decorator table and chairs, which I thought ended up being pretty cute. And I didn't even really see this, but I kind of like the wood texture right there. The new Dream Home Decorator rug, which I think is really pretty. Overall, I just went for a very yellow, black, white, and tan color scheme, because I think the yellow swatches in this pack, but also in the Sims in general, just tend to be really good. This is the new wall plant that I think is just so cute. A kitchen using all of the new Dream Home Decorator modular furniture. This is the separate stove and counter object. This is our bedroom. I actually, so this is actually one of my favorite objects in the game. I love this little lamp. I put it in as many of my builds as possible, because even though it comes from vintage glamour stuff. It has a very kind of like faux vintage sort of appearance to me. Like I could see this being in somewhere like Target 
or maybe like a uh, home goods. This whole room, except for that and the rug, is basically just dream home decorator. The rug is from City Living, I believe. I really liked how it turned out, and I especially love, I love this little llama object. It's so, so cute. And just in general, like I said, I love this vanity that I built. It just looks so crisp and clean, and oh, it's so pretty. So moving on to the backyard. This is our backyard with our small patio, our game table, our evening lights. Very minimal landscaping that still took me way too long to figure out. And if you move to the front, you'll see kind of again the closed off green space with the low lying purple flowers the pond slash pool and just you know the trees and the kind of crisper cleaner bushy landscaping and yeah guys that is the whole build overall i'm really pleased with how it turned out and personally i think i did a pretty good job at hiding my boring old square using just landscaping patio work and platforms on the roof to create the illusion of multiple boxes being used to make up the structure but you'll have to let me know what you think also let me know whether you've done anything like this and also what other types of builds or build challenges you'd like to see me do and I'll give it my best shot as a non-builder. Also, also, let me know what you think about Dream Home Decorator. Obviously, you now know what I think, but I want to know what you think as well. Anyway, so that's it. And thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye!